Hey guys, we finally did it. We hit 1000 subscribers here on YouTube and I'm so excited to share with you my journey, my takeaways, and even do a Q and A while eating a thousand calories. So stay tuned. All right guys, I'm so excited and I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your support and Hey, heard you hit 1K. Hey. There you go. We did, yes. Thank you. We hit 1K subscribers and it's all because of you. And again, I just wanna say thank you so much for becoming a part of my family and a part of the stay-at-home profit family. So I decided to change up this video and do a 1,000 calorie challenge to celebrate 1,000 subscribers. And while doing this, I thought we could talk about my takeaways of my journey and maybe do a little Q&A, right? Yep, sounds good. All right, so just so you guys know, it really was not that hard to go out there and get a thousand calories worth of food. Um, pretty much Panda Express is Everything. almost a thousand. <laughs> and then pumpkin pie, because you can't celebrate without a pie. So let's dive into this. Okay, sounds um, good. Bill Frida. Cut yourself a piece and get into it. I'm gonna start off with this. Um, I will have to tell you guys, one of the biggest takeaways that I got from this journey is that you really need patience when starting out a YouTube channel. And it's okay that it'll take some time. It's not gonna be mad, viral, you know, over the weekend. And you really just gotta put a lot of thought and heart into it. So I'm really glad that you guys have all watched over the last year and you guys have really helped me become a way better content creator. Do you want me to say stuff? <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> so a lot of you guys might not know this, but my husband right here actually helped create tons of our content. He edited so many of the videos and really kept me in line during a lot of this recording. <laughs> I need a new husband. I need to like. I still like. I'm not sure what to say. I'm weird on camera. <laughs> Just be like, yeah. Like, what were your takeaways? Like, what were my takeaways? Mm -hmm. Well, it was a nightmare, but I knew it was probably gonna be worth it in the end because I feel like YouTube is one of the best platforms to get your message out, and that if we we're able to produce good content, more people would find us and she'll be able to help more people in what she does. And so I really think YouTube's probably one of the best uh, social media platforms out there as far as getting a strong, um, basically strong ideas and strong uh, messages out better than like Instagram where you spend like a second per post or like, you know, TikTok, it's like five seconds, 10 seconds. Whereas like YouTube, you're like committing 10 minutes of your life to someone, so. I don't know. I think it, it was uh, probably one of the better choices we made, but also one of the hardest because it's not easy to do at all. You are eating this all wrong, but yes, it is not easy to do. A lot of you guys don't know, but a lot of our videos were made at the middle of the night, around like midnight to anywhere until 3, 4 a.m. <laughs> anyway, so what are some things that you learned on this journey? You know, besides having patience, a lot of times it just comes from getting outside of your own head. I think for the first few videos, I would just, I wouldn't watch them after they were uploaded. I didn't want to check out the comments because I was so focused on negativity and how I looked and how I sounded. And I think it wasn't until maybe our sixth or seventh episode that I was able to really go back in and listen to it and get really excited and share it. Mm -hmm. um, so just, Get outside of your own head. The worst thing that could actually happen is someone doesn't like your video and I promise, usually you're not gonna get in the beginning enough people to not like your video or to say something about it. And if you do, it really isn't worth your time to focus on that one thing because you're actually doing something amazing and you're putting yourself out there. Yeah, definitely. Like we didn't even have probably in a single negative like thing on our video unless the video is doing really well in general. So it kind of like says, unless the, like, unless the video was getting like thousands of views, that's when we would start getting negative comments, negative or like, dislikes, things like that. Outside of that, like people are really supportive and like, yeah, 
people are just really, really nice on YouTube, especially in the beginning, and they're just happy to find you and subscribe to you and listen to your content, and yeah, people were pretty cool. I think consistency was really hard because awesome. it's really hard to come up with a bunch of ideas, or even if you do, being in the right mindset for those ideas when you're supposed to film. We tried batch filming, and it was really hard in the beginning, um, and then we tried to set a single time every day to film, but sometimes life happens. Kids. Kids, Kids happen. happen. Yeah. <laughs> and I think just not, be consistent, but don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. So instead of putting, you know, two videos a week out or putting a video a week out, try just once every other week or once a month and start slow and start building up from there. Yeah, definitely. And just like generally just I mean, it's gonna take some willpower, but, and this sounds like cliche, but you're gonna have to commit, you're gonna have to stick to it, because it's gonna be something that you're gonna push off, you're gonna rationalize in your head. If you start off with a schedule like two days a week in the beginning, and then one week comes by, and you're just like, well, it's not gonna hurt that bad if I only film one video this week. It's like, yeah, you're probably right, but then the next week you're gonna think the same thing, and then it's gonna be a cycle, and like, you really have to just commit and stick to it, because it is, it's difficult, it's worth it, but it's difficult. How hard was the editing because of the videos? Like, I was a pain in the butt. In the beginning, it was pretty easy. Well, not easy, but um, I mean, I wasn't trying so hard with the editing. Like, it was really just make sure there's nothing that's not supposed to be in the video, and that's it. So, like, just cutting, like, just basically the A roll in the beginning, super easy, and it's just. You know, just chopping stuff out that shouldn't be in the video and not adding anything in, not adding any effects, not adding anything to entertain the video, not adding any like uh, camera changes or anything like that was easy. But then I really, really started getting into it and I still started learning a lot more and I learned more about camera stuff and I really, really started to enjoy it. And then that gradually resulted in the videos getting harder to edit because now I would sit there and spend 30 30 minutes, 45 minutes trying to figure out how to do like a certain transition that I had in my head or like something like that. I would just have an idea and I'd have to like figure out all these different programs and uh, try and make it work. And that's when editing became like, you know, a six, seven hour project and you'd ask me if I was almost done and I would be like two hours just trying to make a title do what I wanted to and then kind of became like a, a rabbit hole for me. But yeah, it was awful. That's pretty much what probably delayed us from being as consistent as we should have been was just the editing. You had no experience in this before, huh? True, yeah. So just a reminder guys that you can get into something new without the experience and still see success slowly but surely. Yeah. Um, a lot of Peter McKinnon. If you knew, <laughs> if you knew this, like how this would end up or how this would be when we first started, do you think that you would, we would have started this still? Like as far as starting a YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it was fun. And like, like I said, like I thoroughly enjoyed like sinking a lot of time into it. And like, I've had a lot of fun doing it the entire time. I think we've learned a lot. I think we've definitely like grown as far as like our business and all of that. So yeah, I definitely would do it over again. You know, I would absolutely do it over again but I think I would try to be way more prepared. I think if you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, I would come up with 30 ideas first. Just come up with 30 simple ideas and think about what that would entail from your script to how you would want your videos to look like, how you would want your viewers to interpret it and having templates already made for like the descriptions. Cause we went through a different different type of subscriptions until we finally made a template for every single video. So just getting a lot of that pre-work out of the way, I would have changed and then kind of dived into it. Yeah, it's just like anything else for like, if you systematize it and create processes to it, like it's definitely gonna help. YouTube doesn't seem like something that would benefit from that, but it, well, I mean, depends on how you look at it. You probably might not think it could benefit from that because it's really just, throwing videos on the internet. Like you can do that on Facebook without much thought at all. But YouTube is definitely a lot different and there's a lot more thought that needs to go into it. And then on top of that, like creating your systems and processes behind that, just like definitely it, it helped out and sped things up a lot as we 
progressed along. So before we go into our Instagram Q&A, where I had posted a question on Instagram about what they wanted to know, um, we thought it might be fun to show you guys a lot of the bloopers that went into these past videos. So here they are. All righty, Amazon number eight. Nope. <laughs> That's gonna turn you from an ugly, talentless frog. Wait, what? Is <laughs> it, so why are you calling them names? <laughs> I don't know. I have a lesser known website. Why can't I say this? Okay, so let's on. <laughs> Take three. Take four. Take five. Take six. Um, to help your perspective leads get into another communication method. <laughs> what the f <laughs> Why can't I medium? Do Why can't medium? Medium. I'm a size medium. I'm a medium. I'm a medium. I'm a medium. I'm a medium. You want to get them in a medium? All right. Bow. Bow. Doll. Doll. Go. Go. Now all together. Dango. <laughs> so I might have messed that up quite a bit. It's Baldango. <laughs> Baldongo. It's actually Baldongo. As you can see right here. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Alright guys, I want to woke you f f creating a sample. Step one. Okay. Step one. So step one. So step one. <laughs> Stop. Step one. It's for all of you who want to make a work at home profit. I don't know what happened. Stay Great. at home. That's my bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm so, okay. Your, your brand is literally stay at home profit. I know. All right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed all of those embarrassing bloopers. But um, we're going to do a quick, fun Q&A. Okay. So this is pulled from a lot of different places as well as Instagram. So the, the questions are kind of all over the place. But uh, let's start off with what's your favorite thing to do in your free time? I love to watch romantic comedy and TV shows on Hulu and Amazon. But I've also really started to get into watching more YouTube content, which is really hard because I try not to be a consumer um, and try to continue to be a creator, but um, <laughs> doesn't always work like that. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, <laughs> what's your favorite social media platform? So I love Facebook a lot, <clears throat> just because I can really connect to people one-on-one -on -one and connect to people there one-on-one. -on -one. But I've started to really enjoy Insta uh, YouTube Live and been watching a lot of videos live because you can really start interacting with your favorite creators there one on one too. Okay, so a lot of these other, some of these questions have been answered. Uh, There's a lot of YouTube questions, but relating back to your business, do you think someone that absolutely loves YouTube could get a VA, VA job that has to do with YouTube? Oh my God, absolutely. So a lot of times when I told you guys about like that pre-work, you can get a VA to do for you. Um, especially like uploading your video, uploading the description, um, engaging with commenters on there, um, making sure that the SEO and the keywords are there, as well as there are virtual assistants that are editors and graphic designers and thumbnail creators. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a friend who works on Fiverr and all she does is create thumbnails and they're like three, five dollars each. And she can make about a hundred dollars a day easily. And it doesn't take her more than like five minutes per thumbnail. So you can definitely become a virtual assistant just for YouTube creators. Cool. Okay. Um, do you still consider yourself a virtual assistant? I have, I think two premium clients as their VA, but I'm more of a executive VA or a business manager VA. But um, besides that, I'm more of a educator now, I feel like, and creator 
where I try to create like digital products and create, I don't know, online resources for other people to become service providers. Okay, so this one you may or may not want to answer, but what's the most you've ever made in a month as a virtual assistant? 18K, I believe. Um, I had signed on a few big projects. One was with like a software company where I was doing their social media rollout for a new app. And then others were um, like Facebook ads management and higher premium tasks, I guess. So yeah. Okay, and was that all monthly or was that like a bunch of large contracts that all got signed at the same time or is it a little of both or a little bit of both i think if we just strictly took out like just monthly um i probably made about 10k okay do you ever get nervous before a discovery call oh my god yeah i Still? I get, yes, still. I get in my head because I'm a people pleaser. And if you guys know your Enneagram and if you haven't watched my video, definitely go back and watch it. But I'm an Enneagram three. So I'm an overachiever. I'm a people pleaser. I'm a, I have to achieve everything I set my mind to. And that means I need to pretty much get, get the sale at the end of the call, get the client at every call. So I get really nervous and I try to strategize between every call, but I'm really glad that I have created like my sales script and my onboarding and my client process, which has really helped me nail consistently interviews and have a high closing rate. Have you ever gotten a client, or excuse me, have you ever gotten a client without ever getting them on a Zoom call or discovery call? Yes, um, you guys haven't seen the video yet. It's still in progress. But I did a 4K in 30 days challenge and I signed about two of those clients through Facebook DMs. So it's highly possible. I know a lot of people don't like being on Zoom or don't like being on video. So signing people through like Messenger or the DMs is really easy to do and a lot of people do it. Okay. And then what's the craziest thing you've ever been asked to do as a virtual assistant? So. Like I can think of a couple of odd things that I've heard you have to do, like just like calling help. like, you know, the vet and things like that. But was there anything else that was just super bizarre as an assistant to do? So yeah, when I first started out, I was living in Japan and I had a client in the United States. And so she had me call like as if I was her to get her like appointments um, and things like that. But um, I had this client and she was a legit client. I'd worked with her for a couple months and then she finally asked me that, you know, she was starting up a new business and um, it involved selling things on Craigslist and in um, online that were maybe considered taboo and it was very uncomfortable for me so i think after that month i ended up letting her go as a client but it was really bizarre because it's very personal um things that were considered taboo so it's definitely something that i just personally did not feel comfortable um i think that's the only thing i can think of that was really bizarre okay um i believe that is it for the questions all right well guys thank you so much again for being such I feel a like we ate a thousand calories just, yes just just so we can get that on the record anyway we ate a thousand calories for a thousand subscribers we are full we are happy and i just want to say before we say goodbye thank you so much for becoming a part of the stay at home profit family i'm so excited to hear about all of your guys's remote work opportunities i've gotten tons of emails and messages and so many people in my Facebook group, Stay at Home Profit, the VA Hub, most of them are from YouTube and you guys have told such amazing stories of how you got started and how it just started with a simple watch of our video channel. So I just want to appreciate you guys so much and until we hit 10K, we'll have another, you know, maybe 10K calorie challenge or something like that to celebrate. But thank you so much and until next time. 
subscribe and subscribe below and subscribe and, and subscribe and subscribe and subscribe smash that subscribe button and subscribe don't forget to subscribe and like all you have to do is hit that like button subscribe obviously and don't forget to and don't forget to push that notification bell bye see you guys later